I always wanted to be a Royal Marine from a very, very young age. I, I suppose I grew up in quite difficult circumstances and um, my dad was a violent alcoholic and he used to beat me mum and my mum would cry for me to come and help her and I'd freeze with fear. Um, and my dream as a, as a kid and growing up was uh, I suppose to be a brave person, someone who could go in and help their mum. And for me, growing up, the epitome of a brave person was a Royal Marines commander. My name's Lee Spencer. Um, I was a Royal Marine for 24 and a half years. I served in Afghanistan, done three tours of Afghanistan and also Iraq, and years ago, Northern Ireland. And uh, I was medically discharged after losing my leg on the side of the road when I stopped at the scene of an accident. You kind of hoped that you get the chance to be everything you've trained for and be everything that you dreamt of being. And I was in Charlie Company, section commander in Charlie Company when we went into Iraq. That um, there, there was one point and I remember, I always remember, it was on a corner of a building. And I, I was a section commander, so I was like, right, like, go to the two guys that were in front of me in my section. And uh, one of them said, I can't, I can't, they're shooting at me. And after saying, well, shoot them back, it occurred to me that like, I knew I was here, no one else was here. I cannot order anyone round into oncoming fire. I have to leave the section. And I went round that corner, uh, led the section round. I absolutely believed that I was gonna get shot. You know, in a very real way, I, I, for me, I stared down death and that lurking voice in the back of your, back of your mind that tells you you're no good and, and tells you you're a coward, it, I, it went after that. When, when you're away um, and things are happening when you're, you're in theatre, especially Afghanistan, the middle tour 2010, I was forward deployed um, with 40 Commando in Sangin. And it was quite a kinetic tour. Um, but when you're there, it's your life and that's your normality, so you get on with it. It's when you come back, there's certain points, certain things that kind of haunt you, it's probably the right word actually, that you, you dwell on. Um, I lost my leg in 2014. I was uh, driving back to work on a Sunday night after Christmas leave, ready to start work again on a Monday morning. And I come across a car that had crashed into the central reservation. Um, and it was, it was a really stormy black night. It was about almost midnight. Uh, luckily the people that had crashed, they'd got out of the car, so there was no one left in the car. And uh, I was checking them over, making sure that they were okay. Um, when another car crashed into theirs with such force, its engine and gearbox came flying out and uh, hit me um, and I lost my leg on the scene. I could feel shock happening and I could feel my body literally shutting down from the outside in, inwards as um, you know, like your body takes all the blood that it can get and packs it in your abdomen um, to keep your vital organs going. And I could feel that happening. And there was a point where I knew I was right on the edge between life and death, this world and whatever's next. Um, my guardian angel in the rather strange guise of a Rastafarian from Hackney called Frank came along and he says, is there anything I can do? I said, I need a tourniquet now on my leg. He took his belt, wrapped it round uh, my leg, but we just couldn't get it tight enough. So I kind of had a, an, a, an idea and I got his daughter, Zanelli, he had his adult daughter with him to stand on me groin, on me femoral artery. And she stood on me and dug a heel in and um, that stopped the bleeding. Um, eventually when the ambulance came, 
I'd lost over half my body's blood, so I was right, right on the edge. Um, and I woke up the next day in hospital, uh, minus my leg, but alive, because I'd been to Afghan, particularly Afghan. I recognised immediately what had happened and reacted instantly. If I hadn't, if I'd have delayed it by a couple of minutes, I wouldn't be here now. Before I lost my leg, I volunteered with special duties. I'd operated in Afghan. I'd led men in war. And I was proud of the person I saw staring back. I was really proud. I loved my job. I loved doing it. And then I lost that. And then I got the opportunity um, through some wonderful people who gave so much of themselves I got the opportunity to row across the Atlantic and it gave me another purpose in life. It gave me another road to go down, another opportunity. And I'm so grateful for that, that I'm able to do this. So I, I'm i not a hero. I'm not going to say I don't see myself as a hero. I'm not. Clearly not. And anyone who knows me will tell you I'm not. I'm very lucky. I'm lucky that I've got this opportunity to do this. Uh, my, my mission is to keep wounded and injured servicemen in the nation's conscience to remind people that there's, there's men and women who have had their lives shattered in our service. And I don't count myself as one of them. I wasn't injured in service. But I believe passionately that we as a society owe them a life with dignity. And that isn't charitable. For me, that's, that's a matter of principle. If you want to help UK veterans, then please play the Veterans Lottery.